7, 1967. After nearly 2,000 years, Jerusalem is in Jewish hands again. The Six-Day War, third of five Arab-Israeli wars. A war fought on three fronts, each quite different. The Sinai Desert, scene of dramatic tank battles and the destruction of an entire army. The largely urban street battles in Jordan as the Israelis fought their way into the holy city of Jerusalem. The victorious heroes enter the gates of the old city of Jerusalem and arrive at the western wall filled with jubilation. <laughs> Welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Remember to call if you want to join the conversation. We'll take your calls on any of these three scandals that are brewing in Washington, D.C. The Benghazi cover-up, the, the scandalous incompetence or malevolence of this administration, Hillary Clinton repeatedly turning down requests to, to boost the security there at the compound, even though their own information said this is one of the most dangerous locations for a facility in the entire world, the failure to send resources to try to help them when they were under attack, the fact that President Obama completely AWOL from 5 p.m. until he shows up in Las Vegas for a big giant party with four dead Americans left behind in Benghazi, to the the cover-up on the part of the Obama administration trying to pretend portray that this was all a result of a rocket-propelled grenade movie review uh, rather than a deliberate terrorist attack, and all of that completely falling apart uh, for this administration. Then you've got the IRS scandal. We talked about that a little bit. The IRS going after conservative groups, Tea Party groups, uh, people that wanted to simply improve life in America. I got kind of a, uh, came across a cute little post today. Let me see if I can grab that one. Todd Zywicki on the Volok Conspiracy website. Uh, Here he says the letter that I am sending to the IRS. Dear IRS, I don't want to make America a better place to live, and I hate the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Sincerely, Todd, P.S., does this mean you won't audit me? Well, as a matter of fact, it does mean you won't be audited because the IRS didn't care about anybody but the Tea Party groups, the Patriot groups, the groups that wanted to educate people about the Constitution, the groups that wanted to make America a better place to live. They are the ones that got targeted, and this this intrusion went right to the top. In fact, uh, uh, Jeff, let's grab audio bite A9. This is John Carl, ABC. Now, John Carl has been doing some good journalism. He's the one that broke the story that those talking points had been edited 12 times that uh, that all references to al-Qaeda and terrorism had been leached out of them. They were in the talking points. They were leached out under pressure from the State Department. That's Hillary's, uh, under Hillary's charge. Uh, that, that information was leached out of there. Uh, all the references to the prior warnings that the CIA had issued about how risky the Benghazi, that was all leached out of there. And then Petraeus looks at the, at the talking points that the State Department had pulled together and said, I don't want to go with that. We shouldn't even use those talking points. That's not even responsive to what this Democrat congressman was asking for. But he gets overruled by the State Department. That's Hillary Clinton. And so these edited talking points are the things that go out. And John Carl was the one that broke that story about all the edited versions. Now, here is John Carl. This is audio A9. This is John Carl, ABC, talking about this IRS scandal and the harassment of conservative groups. Let's listen. The IRS has said that this was limited to officers in its Cincinnati office, but these two letters provided to me by a lawyer for some of the groups show that at least some of the targeting was done right out of Washington, D.C. The letters, which have a return address of Washington, D.C., specifically ask for information about donors, something applicants for tax-exempt status are not required to provide. As the scandal grows, the IRS is now acknowledging that Acting Commissioner Stephen Miller has known about the targeting of conservative groups for a full year, first learning about it last May. But the IRS did not publicly acknowledge or apologize for it until just a few days ago. The saga has rocked the White House. The saga has rocked the White House. They are rocking and they are reeling in the White House because this is ABC. So you got the Washington Post out there. 
saying about President Obama on this act of terrorism claim, liar, liar, pants on fire. You got ABC saying, look, the editing points were monkeyed with. This IRS thing is rocking the White House right to its roots. They are in big, big trouble. Here is Joe Klein, clip four, Rob, if we can, video clip four. Uh, Joe Klein talking about this IRS uh, scandal. He's on hardball with Chris Matthews. Now, this guy... Joe Klein, uber left-winger. You can't get any more left-wing than Joe Klein. And here's what he had to say about this IRS scandal. It's no secret that this hasn't been the best managed administration uh, that we've seen come down the pike in a while, although the president really is proud of his record of non-corruption, which this, you know, <laughs> kind of destroys. But I well, do believe that he's in not the, connected to it personally, at least. I, and, so well, far. <laughs> I do believe that in the end, oh, the Chris. big issue here isn't going to be the mistake um, and the stupidity of the mid-level employees who, who launched this. But it's going to be how much did the White House know and sure. when did it know it? Was this scandal, um, you know, submerged? Was this scandal submerged for electoral purposes in 2011 and 2012? That's the question that he asked. So you got Joe Klein saying, look, I suspect that the White House was behind this. The White House engineered this. We need to find out how much they knew about this IRS thing and when they found out. Because President Obama, let's grab clip, uh, where is the clip where Obama, oh, clip five, Rob, just play this, and then we'll take some phone calls. Here's when President Obama says he found out about the IRS situation and how. Well, let me take the IRS uh, situation first. Uh, I first learned about it from the same news reports that I think most people uh, learned about this. Uh, I think it was on Friday. So President Obama saying, hey, I didn't know a thing about this until Friday. I found out about it the same way you did through the news. Well, now we know that the top-level IRS people knew about this a year ago. So how is it that President Obama doesn't know a single solitary thing about it until he reads about it in the newspaper? You've obviously got either some severe dysfunction He's got absolutely incompetent, irresponsible people that he's responsible for. He put them in place. He's the guy at the top. The buck stops with him. Or he's lying when he tells us that he didn't know a single solitary thing about this prior to last Friday. And I think this is just absolutely bogus. We've got other stories here may have a time to get to where ProPublica, which is a left-wing group, they came out and said, yeah, we went to the IRS and they sent us these applications for nine of these conservative organizations, and we published the information on six of them. Now, the law says that the IRS cannot release any of that information until the application has been approved. So this is information they were not legally permitted to give to an opposition group, let alone anybody else. It wasn't supposed to be available to the public. Now, once you get your status, you got to file these Form 990s, and it goes up on the IRS website, and anybody can go get it. But until the application is granted... That information is not to be seen uh, by anybody. So we'll see. President Obama, you heard him, said, I just found out about it on Friday through the news. We'll see if that bears out. Let's go to the phones. Let us go to Kevin in uh, Davenport, uh, Iowa. Kevin, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Uh, thanks for taking my call. Um, just real quick, uh, do you think that the Main Street America is finally going to pick up on what's been going on because generally speaking the news that I've gotten is either AFA or from the web and uh, you know I know lots of people who are just still in Obama's back pocket and they they aren't they're saying all oh, this is lies and blah 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 and, you know they just are not the mainstream media doesn't seem to be doing a good job just I want your opinion on that okay well that's a that's a good question Kevin and I'll tell you if it wasn't for this Department of Justice Associated Press business the American people may never find out this stuff, but I will tell you, we'll play some sound bites next hour. I mean, the mainstream media, they are ticked about this Associated Press thing. You know, I said this in a tweet yesterday. Look, when the IRS, this is where, the, as far as the media is concerned, this is how they look at it. When the IRS went after the Tea Party, that's Obama going after them. When the Department of Justice goes after the Associated Press, that is Obama coming after us. Now, they will forgive the first, Obama going after the Tea Party, because they despise us. They despise everything we stand for. 
You got the head of the N- the NAACP, the National Association for the Abortion of Colored People, former head Julian Bond, saying, "Hey, they ought to go up." He's saying this today. They ought to go after these Tea Party groups. They're a malignancy. They ought to be taken out by the IRS. Uh, so the, the the press would give them a pass eventually on that. But when Obama comes after them, that is a whole another story. One last call. Let's go quickly to Terrence in Iowa. Terrence, welcome to Focal Thanks. Point. What's on your mind? Well, I appreciate your program and uh, AFR. And I want to start by quoting Isaiah 9, if you remember Isaiah 9, that, you know, the, the company, the country uh, needs to repent of its sins. And yes. second of all, uh, uh, I have experienced uh, abuse by the IRS when I uncovered a felt like a fraud pool of IRS agents laundering uh, tax returns. Uh, my partners were personally involved. We were going through dissolution. And uh, I got threatened by the head of internal security out of Cincinnati. And uh, I didn't know that I'd sat next to an IRS agent in church. Well, I knew I'd sat by him and told him what was going on. It took him 15 minutes to find about $1.3 million laundered by the retired director of the IRS uh, for a lawyer. And, of course, I was the informant. And, of course... They wanted to cover it up, and when I had kind of like a deep throat phone call for a phone call, and wanted me 270 miles away to, you know. Hey, uh, Terrence, can I have you hold on over the news break? I'd like to finish your story. We're coming up against a hard break. Can you hold on? Sure. All right, we'll get right back to Terrence after we hear the news. Focal Point AFR Talk. Be back right after this. Their outstanding victory gave the Israelis defense in depth for the first time in their history. Instead of being threatened by neighbors, Israeli forces now occupied the areas from which those threats were mounted. Put down. 